Hello and welcome to this episode of Hampton Roads Business Live. My name is Rory Graham and I'm your host and today we have the pleasure of having with us Tracy Moore who is a author and an entrepreneur. Welcome. Thank you, Rory. I'm glad you could uh, make it in here on this cold morning. Yes. And I mean, it's really cold. It's like 20, 21 degrees it really out there. Is. Thank uh, you for having me. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so you're, you're a published author. Yes. Uh, and uh, and uh, your, your book, which we're going to talk about here, is available um, on Amazon and uh, Barnes & Noble. Yes. Uh, and it's also a Kindle book. Right? Yes, okay. that's true. Well, cool. Yeah, that's I, true. I just started getting some of those in Kindle, so yeah. that's, that's, it, and it's a, um, a, a good good way to get books occasionally, when, especially if mm -hmm. you're traveling. I agree. Um, uh, so tell us. Uh, let's start off with. Uh, we're going to get to the book in a second, but tell us about your background because you have a, <laughs> a really extensive background as far as different things. An interesting backstory. Yes, I started out wanting to be a veterinarian. But I found out that I couldn't stand the sight of blood, so I had to change my direction. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bit of a hindrance, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up going into engineering. My dad encouraged me to go there, but I really wasn't fulfilled in it. So while I was doing the engineering thing, just searching out what I wanted to do, I ended up selling insurance, ended up selling financial products. Then I went into social work field. I got a Christian counseling degree. Swung all the way to the other end. You know, engineering. You have a math background, right? I do. Engineering yeah. is my yeah, math background. Math, okay, and then I swung all the way over to the soft stuff with the counseling and social work. Worked in that for a while. Then I went to be a teacher, a math teacher. Swung back to the math part of my brain, and wasn't fulfilled in that either. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm the type of person I believe in doing what you love. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stay in something that I didn't, don't enjoy doing. So I said, well, let me try something else. So I went back to the financial piece and ended up teaching financial classes to sailors in the Navy, which I really, really enjoyed. I did that for about six years, worked at Navy Federal Credit Union for a while, and then I decided that I wanted to write. I ended up having to leave because of health issues, mm -hmm. unfortunately. but. It paid off for me. I, I really enjoy what I'm doing now. So now I'm writing full time mm -hmm. and speaking. Right, speak so th agents. this book is called um, your uh, Oasis uh, for My Soul, right? Yes. Okay. This, All right. Yeah, you can share that. This is my book, Oasis for My Soul, my first one, my mm -hmm. baby. Yes, your baby. Okay. How yes. long did it take you to write that? I would say to put it together it took about a year, mm -hmm. year and a half. But actually, I've been writing poems since high school. I would write poems on napkins and throw them in a file, or a scrap of paper, throw it mm -hmm. in a file. And once I left my job, I said, okay, what am I gonna do with my life now? And then I started to say, okay, well maybe I can pull these poems out and write a book. I always thought about writing what I call a poetic devotional. Mm -hmm. So I pulled the poems out, I loaded them into the computer, and then I wrote devotional pieces with them, and that's how the book was born. Huh, okay. And that reminds me, you know, I read in your bio that you know, it's one of the one of the things was some of your favorite authors, mm -hmm. and um, a couple of them are are uh, ones I read too. As Joe Olstein was one. Yes. Uh, but one I I have all of his books, and I have a lot of tapes and things on him is John Maxwell. Yes. And yes. Um, his background, it, it reminds me of that because his mm -hmm. background is that he files everything. <laughs> he files all mm -hmm. these ideas he has and mm -hmm. he hears a quote or he yeah. hears something and he files and he's got this incredible file system which is how he writes all these books. That's a great idea. You know? And you just said that you pulled it from your files that you had filed that stuff so maybe yeah. you picked up something along the way yeah, to file that's stuff. that's a great idea he <laughs> yeah. has. I have to try yeah, that. He, he files everything. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, uh, yeah. so, all right, so it took you a year to write this. Yes. Um, and, uh, uh, so this is really uh, a faith-based book, right? Yes, it Would is. Would you like to talk about your faith a little bit? Because I know it's quite strong. Thank you. Yes, I would. I, I gave my life to Christ when I turned 12. Actually, I joined the church at mm -hmm. age 10 but didn't know what I was doing. And mm -hmm. when I got baptized, I might as well have jumped in the bathtub and got out because I just didn't know what I was doing. But then we had a youth pastor that came to our church, and he really talked about what giving your life to Christ really means. 
that I know that Jesus died on the cross and paid a penalty for my sins and that I believe he rose from the grave and God counted that to me as righteousness and that I was allowing God to take over my life and put him first. He explained that clearly to me when I was 12 and I gave my life to Christ for real mm -hmm. then. Okay, and obviously it made a difference. It did. I really didn't begin to grow a great deal until I got into college and I got into a gospel group that mm -hmm. really discipled me and helped me to understand how to apply the Bible to my life. But um, yeah, 12 years old, that's when I got on the path and been going ever since and just thank God he's in my life. He's done so much for me. Right, so who is this book written for? Who are you trying to reach as a reader? I want to reach people who want to grow in Christ, who want to go to a new level in their faith, who want a deeper, more intimate relationship with God. So people who are interested in spiritual and personal growth, that's who I want to reach. And also people who just love Christian poetry. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you have a favorite poem in there? My favorite poem is called Die Empty. And this poem, it sounds a little morbid, but what I mean by that is that all From the... From someone who doesn't like the sight of blood, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Die empty. Yeah, okay. so what I mean by that is every gift and talent that God has placed in us, we need to get it out and use it for God's glory, leverage it for the kingdom, and not go to the cemetery with gifts and talents untapped. It's kind of like no regrets. Right, right. It's just like leave it all on the field for Christ. Can I do that poem? Would that be okay? Sure. Sure. Can you do it by memory? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Well, if you're going to do it, then go ahead and look at that camera okay. and do it, and uh, the stage is yours. Okay. The poem is entitled, Die Empty. I am determined to die empty. Every gift, every talent God has placed in me will be used for His eternal glory. I'm destined to live victoriously. I'll pour myself out like a drink offering. I'll overcome any obstacle Satan brings in my heart. Sing a song of thanksgiving. As I accomplish my goals, God's praises I'll sing. The battle may be fierce and hot, but I will not succumb to Satan's plot. I will give it everything I've got. Mediocrity will never be my lot. My life will count. You wait and see. I will not accept what will be will be. Everything God put in will come out of me. I will live spirit filled, but I'll die empty. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Thank you. Yeah, and obviously you have a lot of passion there. <laughs> I do, and I really, that's what I want to die empty. And, 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 and no notes. <laughs> so you, of course, I guess you wrote it, so <laughs> I guess you would know, know it. But uh, yeah, that's, that's very good. Thank you. All right, um, what, what would you like people to know about you? That uh, I, I know, and this kind of goes for the next question was, I know that you call yourself the pur purposeful poet. Yes. So you have to explain that too. So between yes. the two, go ahead. Well, I call myself the pur purposeful poet because whenever I do a poem, there's a purpose behind it. It's not that I just want to express myself or ex express what's going on inside of me. It's a purpose involved. And I, my purpose to encourage, uplift, and inspire people to be the best that they can for Christ. Help others. Yeah, to help others. Yeah and help people to grow and come to a new level in their faith walk. That's my purpose. Okay. And I feel like with poetry, a lot of times people try to understand, they, they may not know exactly what it means, there's a lot of symbolism in it, and maybe they feel like it's a little encrypted, so to speak, but with my poetry, you will know exactly what yeah, I, I mean. Yeah, I knew exactly what that one meant that you just read. <laughs> <laughs> there was no guessing. Yeah, <laughs> so. what I, my message is clear and undeniable. And, and, and uh, one of the questions I had here is, how is the book organized? I would like to call my book a poetic devotional. So for each passage, there's a poem, a devotional reading, journaling exercises, and a prayer. And the reason I laid it out like that, actually a 31 poem, so you can do a poem per day, or you can just read it as a book. But the reason I laid it out like that is because I wanted to pull in the whole person when they read the book. Just like with the poems, you pull people in emotionally. With the devotional readings, you pull them in intellectually. With the prayers, you pull them in spiritually, and with the the journaling exercises, you're physically getting them involved in writing something down. So I felt like if I pulled every part of the person in, it would be more impactful as far as getting my message across and getting the information down in their spirit. Well, see, I can, I can tell you've given this an awful lot of thought. 
This yeah. was really well planned out. This Thank wasn't you. as, oh, well, I got all these poems, let me throw them in a book, <laughs> you know? So, I like so. to think it's different than just another poetry book. I like to call it poetry with a twist. Right, so, so what inspires you to write the book? I mean, I know you said mm -hmm. you, you left a job, you had health reasons or whatever, but was there a, a, a moment where you were inspired to do this? I was sitting in my easy chair. That's why I usually have my devotional time. And it just came to me, one day I'm going to write a poetic devotion. I just finished writing a poem. And I said, one of these days I'm going to write a poetic devotion. I think that would be really cool because I really haven't seen a poetic devotional, a poetry book with devotional pieces woven within the book. And I, maybe I just haven't seen it, but I thought it was a novel idea. But right, so that's what makes yours different than a lot of books yeah, out there. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, we talked about some of your favorite authors. I mentioned two, Joe Olstein and uh, John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. And there were there was a couple of others that you had mentioned, but I can't remember. Yeah, who. Joyce Meyer mm -hmm. and Jensen Franklin. Okay. And I always have to read something that's going to uplift me spiritually or help me personally. I don't read novels, and I don't think reading novels is bad, but it's got to be something that's going to inspire me and help me to get to another level in my faith walk. So that's why I... I try to keep it to something that's really going to help. It's self-help or spiritual help. Just like the last book I read is called Think Like a Billionaire, Become a Billionaire. Mm -hmm. It's by Scott Anderson. And that elevated my thinking. It's, he's contrasting the difference between how rich people think versus normal people yeah, think. It's and like it, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. It's, it's a little bit... Another different angle, he mm -hmm. takes the different things, he studied billionaires, millionaires, and just say, okay, these are how, this is how yeah, they I think. have a book called The Millionaire Mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I haven't read that one, maybe yeah, I need to get that. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it hasn't gotten me to a millionaire yet, <laughs> <laughs> but it is along those lines. But it has elevated your thinking, <laughs> Yes, right? it has elevated okay. my thinking, right. Okay, and um, so what, what, what is your newest project you're working on? Because I know you're working on another book. Yes, my second book is entitled The Exceptional Man. And the subtitle is Love Poems and Inspirational Writings, Celebrating Godly Men and Great Relationships. And what I want to do with that book is to celebrate those godly men who are doing exactly what they're supposed to do, doing what they're called to do. There are men out there who are loving their wives. They are bringing their paychecks home. They're mentoring their children, paying their child support, whatever. They're doing the right things. And nobody ever hears about them. So what I want to do is to highlight them. You know, you hear about the ones that aren't paying child support, running the streets and drinking, and this, that. But I want to put the focus on those men that are doing the right thing. And also, I yeah, want... Yeah, there's a lot of us out there. Yeah, yeah there, you there you go. There you go. Yeah, it's just like me and in, 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 in doing this. My, my, uh, one of the reasons, one of the two reasons that I have for doing this mm -hmm. uh, show was mm -hmm. to uplift uh, and promote small business. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of good being done out there for the community and yes. for charities and for, for just, I mean, giving people jobs and mm -hmm. everything else. And... And small business has just gotten a horrible rap. Right. Um, and it's like, if you're successful, you're greedy or something. Mm -hmm. or, you know. <laughs> so, uh, of course, that you can't help anybody if you're looking for your next meal. That's so, true. you know, so, so I, I see this as a way to help promote that. And it's mm -hmm. very similar to, to that. Um, and, and I know that before the interview, we were talking, this isn't on my list, but you are a speaker at different groups. You, yes. you, you do um, uh, a church, not just church groups, but mm -hmm. women's clubs and things. Yes. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Yes. I have done speaking engagements for churches. It's like I had a church that had a 50th anniversary. So mm -hmm. I wrote a poem called 50 Years of His Grace, and I read the poem for the 50-year anniversary. I've spoken at the Chesapeake Women's Group mm -hmm. and churches, Bay Street Baptist Memorial Church. So I, I spoke for their seniors club. So I, I do different speaking engagements, whether it be poetry readings or just bring a message that I want to share based on some theme. Well, it's uh, certainly a message that the, that the world could use more of, I think. Uh, anything uplifting, there's enough bad news out there. Yes, we yeah. need to be encouraged. There's yeah. a lot of hard times well, going on that's, out there. That's right. I, I, Encouragement. I think, I think you need people saying, come on, you can do it, you know? Yes. And uh, you don't hear that very, very often. Um, so, so it's encouraging to have someone on that's helping promote that fight. Thank so, you. So uh, is there anything that I haven't talked about that you wanted to mention before we close? 
Actually, I have a radio program that just started yesterday. Really? And it's on 1270 WTJZ at 8.30. And it's just a in short... The morning? In the morning, 8.30 okay. a.m., thank you. But it's just a short program where I read my poetry and then I expound on points that the Lord has laid on my heart and tell people where they can find me. And it's only five minutes long, mm -hmm. but I hope it will be something that's power-packed. I don't think you have to have a long, drawn-out thing in order to make a difference. So it's five minutes of what I hope will be something that would encourage and uplift and inspire people. And get their day started their day. right. Yes, yes. Okay, all right, well. So it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8.30 a.m. on yeah, WTJ. You know, you might, start, you might think about starting an email list where people would get a message a day. Wow, that's a good idea. Yeah, they could, you know, they could Good idea. Yeah, yeah, start. Yeah, okay. And, and think you about can send that. my royalty check too. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that might be a good way to start people's day. So yes, besides thank you. the radio show. Great idea. Uh, thank okay. You. Uh, well, I, I uh, wish you an awful lot of success. Thank you very and, much. And uh, of course, you have a website. Yes. And that information uh, will be on, on there. What is your website? www.tracylmore.com. Well, that's easy to remember. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so, if you would like to have a, 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 an uplifting book, that uh, devotional that you could uh, go through, and um, it's 30 points, is it, did you say? 31 31, 31 points. Uh, uh, you might give this a, a, a try. You can find it at Barnes & Noble. You can find it, of course, at Amazon. You can find anything at Amazon. <laughs> but uh, it's also available for Kindle, and you can check her out at the website. She's got... Um, the radio uh, show as well. I'm sure the information about that is on the website. And uh, the contact information uh, for uh, Tracy is um, uh, at the uh, uh, end of this video and it's also on this page. So I thank you very much. I wish you a great deal of success. Thank and you. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming in. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right.